Coming up, Jonathan and Todd are going to Kiss Rebreather Boot Camp with legendary cave instructor Ed Sorensen. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. If you've been watching Blue World in the past few years, you've almost certainly noticed that I've become fascinated with cave diving. I've been fortunate to dive all kinds of caves all over the world, from Florida, Bahamas, and Mexico, all the way to Portugal, and even Death Valley. But in all of these dives, my time has been extremely limited by the amount of air I can carry. In order to really explore and document some caves, you simply need more time underwater. And this is where a rebreather comes in. Unlike conventional scuba, where each exhaled breath is exhausted into the water as bubbles, a rebreather recycles a diver's exhaled breath, massively extending the amount of time available from the amount of a gas one is able to carry. And so, cameraman Todd and I have returned to Mariana, Florida to be trained in the ways of the rebreather by legendary cave diving instructor Ed Sorensen. With all our gear loaded into our trusty rental minivan, we head on over to Cave Adventurer's Dive Shop for a five-day intense rebreather class. Adventurers. Here we go. Good fun. Hey, Ed! Hey, great to see you back. Hey, we are so All excited right. to start our training. All right, can't Ed. wait. Ed takes us over to his classroom, which doubles as his gym. And our day starts by filling out the requisite paperwork. There's always paperwork. Even though Todd and I have been certified on other rebreathers in the past, we're taking this class as if we've never used a rebreather before. You guys have been on open circuit. Yes. And so every time we breathe in, we're taking up that breath from the tank uh, and we're metabolizing that 4% oxygen and we're blowing the rest out into bubbles and we'll never see it again. So now we're gonna be on a rebreather and this basically, instead of... The first day, we spent most of the time learning about the preparation, operation, parts, and assembly of the KISS Sidewinder Rebreather. The class will be co-instructed by Ed's head instructor, Mehdi Zinetti. The goes the right direction, and I'll cover that in just a moment. So, you see that corrugated hose goes right into the canister. When we get in the water, we're going to do very little today. We just want to get comfortable on the unit. So working on buoyancy trim and propulsion. So keeping those feet up, knees up, um, making sure our buoyancy is good. Today we'll probably just do the confined water um, and we'll be done for the day. <laughs> All right. After our first lecture, we finally get to the fun part, unboxing our brand new Sidewinders. Very nice. The Sidewinder is a special kind of rebreather designed especially for side mount cave diving. It's highly customizable, and Ed has a huge amount of experience in setting them up. So he takes several hours to help us configure the units perfectly based on our preferences. Much easier. where that's going to be. Is it going to be across here? Yeah. Or is it going to be down there or down here? Yeah. Some people like run it over their shoulder, shoulder and you have to put a, a 90 here. So this one, 
this one's going on. You have to love it when your uh, scuba equipment comes with a sticker that says this device is capable of killing you without warning. Try your mask. Try the mask. Mask over, we're done. <laughs> that little tab in there? Yep. So some people put a screwdriver in there to pry that up. So it's an up. Okay, there's number two in. Yeah, so it is the same as the. Mm -hmm. All right, so. All right, system is set up. I've got to tie to them. It's just occasionally we come across me. I'm starting to get a little worried when the torch comes out and we begin burning holes in my X Deep side mount harness. But this is where you trust the expert. How are you doing the loop in here? How's that? Oh yeah. One of the things we will soon be learning is the importance of the checklist. Rebreathers are more complicated than open circuit scuba. In order to be sure the unit is assembled correctly and working properly, a checklist is always used on assembly. The first thing on the checklist is to check the breathing loop. So first we have to learn how to check it. Then it's leaking and you wouldn't have caught that on the other We have to learn how to test and calibrate the oxygen sensors. And of course, we have to learn how to properly pack the carbon dioxide scrubbers. These are the filters that absorb the CO2 we exhale so we don't re-inhale it. Now, I start where the bolt snaps are, and... Basically, it worked your way around and down the canister. Yep. And then, gently wipe. See how I keep holding pressure down? The material used to absorb the CO2 is casually referred to as sorb. It's a granular substance that looks a lot like kitty litter, but a lot more expensive. Tapping on the side of the scrubber canister helps to settle the sorb and pack it tightly so there's no way gas can seep through without getting scrubbed. Yeah, because this has to be square. The backwards picture is free. With the scrubbers packed, we can start assembling the rebreather. Ed tells me that once we have it down, we can do this whole process in 15 minutes. But at this point, the assembly takes us more than an hour. So once they've stopped going up, then we know that they're capped. At last, it's time to load the rebreathers in the van and try them in the water. We head on over to Jackson Blue Spring, Ed's local teaching spot. Jackson Blue is a first magnitude spring that pumps out several million gallons of clear water every day. We start suiting up with the whole place to ourselves, except for a few local residents. Now, if I can only figure out how to put it on, Uh 
Maybe I'll put it on. What Ed said not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Putting the side mount tanks on is pretty much the same as doing it for open circuit, except there are a few extra pieces in the way. Next we have to learn the proper way to do a pre-breathe, which is mostly about checking the gas mixture and oxygen sensors before the dive. Open it, turn our oxygen on, we're all going to say O2 open, so that we know that the oxygen is open. Work our buoyancy a little bit, and just get used to the breathing, right? Let's do it. O2 open. And finally, the moment of truth, we get to submerge. But for now, we're not going anywhere. We will do our first confined water session right here in three feet of water. Since neither Todd nor I can use a camera, we've enlisted Mehdi as the newest Blue World cameraman. Everything on a rebreather is different than open circuit. I have to completely relearn how to control my buoyancy. Being an experienced open circuit diver actually works against me. We practice lots of basic skills, such as bailing out of the rebreather to open circuit. Next, Ed demonstrates a shallow swimming path that we will follow so he can look at our posture in buoyancy. And now the pressure is on. It's my turn. I think I'm doing pretty well. As it turns out, Ed does not agree. Next, it's Todd's turn. I only hope I looked better than him. When we start losing the daylight, we realize how long we've been at this on the first day. With the sun setting, we finally finished day one. Only four more long days to go. The next morning, we begin by okay. reviewing footage from the Ed this cam, the where way. Ed notes configuration changes to make. To close that two and a half, three inch gap. Then we start so class and talk end. about new oh, skills man. to add for you today. Is way too high today. We're gonna close, get it out, bring it right up then tuck that. You guys did a really good job there. Then we're going to just slide down, shut that O2 off. 
If it's 0.82, we want to see 0 0.8, 0 0.79, 0 0.77, 0 0.77, somewhere in there. We also have to learn more operational theory. So we're not adding 32%. Um, we're adding whatever that depth says we're adding. So when you bring the map up, and if it catches a, a wrinkle in your suit or something, it'll it'll hold that button and you're you're basically turning it on by shoving the dill map up. Hello oh, unit. Next, we have to assemble our side winders by ourselves. I didn't think about it. It's the Zen art of compacting your sorb. I think Todd is angry at his. Patrick and Meddy help us with some configuration tweaks that Ed suggested based on his Ed Cam footage. A little while later, we're back at Jackson Blue for the underwater part of the day. Some other people down here have the keys. I am clearly no better at putting on the rebreather by day two. Yeah, that's a shed lift. Meddy's cameraman skills are progressing much faster than our rebreather skills. We begin by reviewing the skills from yesterday before we add in the new skills for today. Ed introduces his flashcards, which tell us which skills to practice or which emergency we need to deal with. Then we have to swim the test circuit again. Hopefully we look better than yesterday.
Next, we head down into the cavern zone to get a little more depth and practice the next set of skills. Todd is checking me for leaks by looking for bubbles. It's called a bubble check. Then we head further into the cavern. Normally, the Sidewinder class is taught entirely in open water. However, because most of Ed's students are cave divers and because he's so close to Jackson Blue, Ed has special permission to teach the class in the cavern zone of Jackson Blue. For the first 20 minutes of the dive, Ed has us simply swim, practice our buoyancy, practice managing our O2 levels, and generally get the feel for the Sidewinder. But then, when you least expect it, the dreaded flashcards come out. And when you do the wrong thing, you get the finger wag, if you're lucky. Todd screwed up. And presented with the same card, I just made the exact same mistake and get the same finger wag. Clearly, this is going to take a while. The circuit Ed has us swimming around the cavern zone is cleverly designed to challenge our buoyancy skills and Ed will not allow us to cheat by touching the ceiling or floor. We stop periodically for another flashcard. Then back to swimming. Every once in a while, when you get something right, you get a fist bump, and that always helps lift our spirits in between mistakes. After two hours in the water, we head back to the surface to discover another day has ended. You know, I gotta be honest. I wasn't expecting the class to be this hard. I mean, I know, okay, it's a rebreather, there's a lot of skills to learn, but you know, I've been diving for 30 years, I'm pretty comfortable in the water. I kind of figured this was pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and uh, at this point I'm realizing it's a lot harder than I expected. I'm enjoying the challenge, of course, but um, I am also, to be honest with you, I'm a little worried about passing the class. Ed is, he's a good instructor and he's very tough and he doesn't let you slide on anything and not only do we have to like master these skills but we have to do them with perfect buoyancy control and i just feel like i'm a bit of a train wreck down there i'm just hoping that in the next couple of days that i can straighten it all out starting day three we're not feeling super confident in our abilities and we breath really forward so when you add that 1.2 to it it's going to go up less. All right, so Mehdi will take over this portion. Uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Mehdi gives us our lecture so, for today close. as we learn more about uh, dive okay. planning. O2. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to watch my PPO2 going down, 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 down. 
So this one will be more efficient in terms of scrubbing the CO2. What will be the advantage of the 408? They're going to be filled up at 34. Okay, so 3400. What was the S Times 2, there's going to be either 218. Okay, well, if you are descending, then you will need to add some volume in your wing and some volume in your... By day three, we do feel like we're getting the hang of assembling the Sidewinder correctly, but it still takes an hour. And then it's back to Jackson Blue. This is the first day we've made it into the water closer to lunchtime than to dinner time. It's just gonna be merely into the mouth, out to the nose, still first to bring it down. Buoyancy skills are improving. They still have a ways to go, though. We head into the cavern to do a bubble and sensor test. Back to Ed's buoyancy torture loop. And of course, the flashcards come out. We're doing a little better with the skills, but we both tend to neglect our buoyancy while we perform them. Plenty of room for improvement. We have new skills to practice at 90 feet, so we work in a deeper section of the cave. On day four, it's all about practicing our skills over and over. So back into the cave we go. And we're not the only ones getting better. Mehdi is getting downright artsy fartsy with that camera. It's not long before the dreaded flashcards come out again. The worst part is knowing that you're being filmed and you'll have to watch your mistakes later in class.
Today we're practicing a mask swap. Because we're practicing this skill in a cave, we also need to adhere to cave diving protocol and stay in contact with the guideline. Monitoring and controlling our partial pressure of oxygen is a skill we practice continuously for the whole dive. Back at the classroom, we review the ed cam and learn from our mistakes. So all that is, is more SCR, but we're going to be a little more conservative because, you know, we can't watch the PO2 now. we got to remember all that stuff tomorrow, though. Tomorrow's the last day. Day five begins with an ominous fog. Well, it's the last day of the class. And in order to graduate, we have to get all the skills right, plus the new skill we're gonna do the, for the first time today. And we've got them mostly down. Mostly. mostly down. We have to be in perfect trim when we do them. Working on that. So you can't just, you can't just do them. You have to have perfect form yes. while you do them. If not perfect, at least pretty good. Look like a parachute. It seems to me like it's harder for me to do that than to do the skill, but okay. We have to get at least 72 more minutes on the machine underwater today to have our five hour minimum. Training. But that yeah. should be okay. That should. Yesterday's dive was like over 100 minutes. Yes, so that should be no problem. Yes, it's a lot of swimming. And then the question is, do we pass? All right. <clears throat> So today, um, we want to talk about real life diving. So if we just learn to react to a card, and we're never going to have Ed following us around, showing us cards, what to do. So we have to start thinking, you know, what do we do? Like you said yesterday, which was an excellent question, you know, what if, you know, why is our PO2 dropping when we did the PO2 too low and too high? Well, you have the potential of keeping some residual gas in that side of the loop because when you, in the whole loop actually, because you inject gas here through the controlling of the OPV. All right, any other thoughts, questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. Go, go, go. So, 11.45 here. Yep. Okay. So this is it. This is, uh, this is our last day. And this is like the final exam. It's like yes. the in-water final exam. He could ask us to do any skill he wants and we have to be able to do it. We're gonna be all right. We're gonna do this. Yes. We're gonna be fine. Uh, yeah. Old, cruddy looking sights. Oh, yeah. Then he's going for the scorpion. Mm -hmm. People just kidding. Freaking pounded by waves. And, uh. Yeah. All right, let's, let's go. go. All right, let's go. Finally, the moment of truth. Will we pass Ed Sorensen's Sidewinder class? So, uh, by this time we should have all this stuff, so we're going to just drop down into our confined water mode 
And we should just breeze through this list of stuff. Alright, let's do it. O2 open to go. Entering the cave, I have some trepidation. On the one hand, I feel pretty confident in my abilities. On the other hand, I'm worried about making a mistake just because I'm nervous. As the flashcards fly, Todd and I are both dealing with every scenario like we actually know what we're doing. We're better about maintaining buoyancy and trim at the same time as well. For nearly two hours, Ed tests us over and over on every skill we learned and we make zero mistakes. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. Last, we complete the tests and head back towards the light, where we're greeted by a school of fish applauding our efforts. After a short safety stop, we ascend to the surface. We're taking high fives and fist bumps as a good sign. Yeah, that was that was a blast, man. I loved it. All right. I hope we passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> On the way back to the shop, we're feeling confident. Well, I think we did okay. I agree. You know, there's things we can certainly improve upon, but I think we're going to, I'm hoping and I think confident we're going to pass. I think we'll pass. I think this morning I wasn't sure if we would yeah. pass, but I feel like we did all right. I was stressed the entire time. <laughs> I was like, Aah! We review the Ed Cam, and for once, most of the comments are positive. Everything's horizontal here, knees up, feet where they belong. See, look how, look how good your calves are working there, Todd. Yeah, I meant So, did we pass? Uh, so, all in all, congratulations on being Sidewinder Divers. Awesome. Woohoo! We are Sidewinder Divers. Uh, yeah. Huh? Huh? Wow. Huh? Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> With my Kiss Sidewinder, a whole new world has opened to me. A world where I can stay down longer, travel further, and interact with marine life without bubbles. I need to build experience and confidence with the rebreather slowly, so I'm not going to do anything too ambitious for a while. But I am excited to have a bunch of new adventures with my new Sidewinder in the Blue World. Hey, you guys. Check out that video, it's a really good one. Also, this one's pretty good too. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.